Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Reading from this uh, wonderful gift book I found a number of years ago, Favorite Psalms of John Stott. Uh, I say gift book because it's kind of a thin, flat book and lays on the old coffee table kind of nicely. There are photographs uh, from Israel all throughout, and those of you who have been to Israel will recognize the garden tomb there. Uh, Such a wonderful place to visit. Uh, Is that the actual place where Jesus rose from the dead? We don't really know, but it would have been a place like that, and this particular tomb certainly has been Uh, dated back to that time period. So it may or may not have been, but I've been inside of that tomb myself. And we've had wonderful worship services there uh, together at the Garden Tomb as we usually it's the highlight of the the trip to Israel. Hope to go again soon. And maybe you want to go with us. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you do, just send me an email at info at thevillagechapel.com. We'll put you on the uh, list to get information next time we go. Psalm 16 is the uh, psalm that I've chosen to read from this uh, this book today. Although this psalm opens with a prayer, keep me safe, O God, it is in reality a believer's testimony regarding both his present faith and his future hope. Let me read the psalm then as uh, John Stott has it here in the book. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you've assigned me my portion, my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I've set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Love the confidence in God from the psalmist here. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Boy, that sounds really attractive to me to have a joyful tongue and heart and to have a ability to sleep at night really well. That sounds great. Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And so Stott's comments, uh, Uh, in this particular book, run along these lines. He sees it as a psalm of present faith and future hope. Um, Having taken refuge in God in verse 1, he's found in God his greatest good and is convinced that even death can't rob him of that true life, which consists of fellowship with God, dwelling with God and God dwelling within us, okay? These final verses were applied to the resurrection of Jesus Christ by Peter on the day of Pentecost and by Paul in the synagogue of Antioch in Pisidia. And we see that uh, especially uh, verse 10 and 11 uh, become uh, sort of fulfillment verses, if you will. They find their fulfillment in the person and work of Jesus in his life. And the fact that uh, he, yes, he died, but three days later he rose again from the grave and really powerful and made known to us the path of life. Well, let's see what Stott says here about present faith. What it means to put one's trust in God or to take refuge in him is explained in verse 2. The believer is turned from the pleasures of sin and the vanities of the world or the emptiness of the world to seek and find his good in God. Delighting in God, he delights also in the godly or the saints. And that's not always easy to do, is it? Uh, I mean, I'm a pastor. I, I know this probably as well as anybody. Sometimes the saints those who call themselves saints, those who belong to the church anyway, sometimes they can be difficult to love. It can be hard to do that. I once saw a bumper sticker that said, Lord, I believe in you, but save me from your followers, you know. Um, and and yeah, it's true. Sometimes religious people can be uh, difficult. But nonetheless, we're called to belong to not only Jesus, but to belong to all of those who belong to Jesus. And that's where the 
salvation of God, the transforming power of that salvation is worked out in reconciled relationships with people that would naturally might not be able to get uh, be able to get along. So he says, in the ungodly, however, who have exchanged the true and living God for other gods, in other words, false gods and dead gods or not not ever alive gods, um, the believer takes no delight. He knows that they will have great trouble. Their sorrows will increase, the people that believe in those kinds of deities. He affirms with resolve that he will neither offer their idolatrous libations of blood, their sacrifices, in other words. And remember, you have to translate some of these terms um, into, you know, we're, we're going back about 3,000 years here, and to religious practices quite different from what we might be used to. So they offered animal sacrifices back then. Um, and he says, I don't even want to mention the names of their false deities. To do so would be incompatible with his wholehearted devotion to the Lord, of whom he now writes in the most exalted of terms in verses 5 and 6 of Psalm 16. The Lord has assigned him his portion, alluding probably to a portion of food rather than a section of land, Stott says here. And he's also given him his cup, thus both satisfying his hunger and quenching his thirst. Further, he has found God to be a delightful inheritance, just like the Levitical priests who were given to who were given no inheritance in Canaan because their inheritance was the Lord himself. Yeah. And then there's this future hope aspect uh, Stott points out uh, here from Psalm 16. So you have the present faith and the future hope. Uh, Verses 7 through 11 of chapter 16, Psalm 16. David, who according to the apostles Peter and Paul was the author of this psalm, now breaks out into thanksgiving, verse 7, that the Lord has given him counsel and that at night his heart instructs him. What this divine instruction is, which he has received, he doesn't make that clear. It seems best to refer to it um, or refer it to the remaining verses of the psalm. But what's really important is that when you, when I go to the Lord in prayer, and especially this happens for a lot of us at night when we can't sleep, and we start churning over scenarios, writing narratives ourselves for what we think is going to happen or might not happen or might happen or whatever, you know, and, and, that all leading us to a great deal of anxiety where we're afraid God's not going to get it right. Or it might lead us to a lot of anger uh, where we're just mad that and because we think God got it wrong, you know. And if we really believe in a sovereign God, we won't believe he ever got it wrong and we'll always believe he'll get it right. And so we're always trusting him. We're always hoping in him. He's more important than the outcomes because he controls all the outcomes and he's righteous and he's just and he's loving as well. God draws near to David and speaks to him. His own heart teaches him while in the stillness of the night he meditates on his intimate fellowship with God. So prayer is a great thing to do. I find, you know, the enemy of my soul, the enemy of my faith, the one thing he doesn't want me to do, pray. And so if I'm having trouble sleeping, one of the first things I do is pray, yeah. He learns to draw from his experience this mighty deduction that because God is ever before him and beside him, I shall not be shaken, verse 8. In other words, the blessings of his communion with God cannot be limited to his satisfaction only. They include his security also. His present faith brings a future hope. There's more there from John Stott. And I encourage you, if you can find that book, that's a tough one to find, though I think it's uh, maybe out of print. But there are probably um, uh, PDF forms of it online somewhere. It's called Favorite Psalms by John Stott. Let me pray for us today. Lord, thank you for the gift that you've given to us of a present faith. Because we recognize even that the faith we have to believe in you, to trust in you, to hope in you, to walk with you, that faith itself is a gift from you. You're the author and perfecter or finisher of our faith, Jesus. So not only the object, but you're the one giving us the faith to believe in you. Lord, help us to now deploy that faith to to walk with you this day. Uh, And may that bring us what Stott has called here a future hope, what he sees in Psalm 16 and what we see there in the life of David so beautifully expressed in that ancient song. Um, Yes, Lord, this day may we walk in present faith with 
future hope. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Keggy. Thank you.